Marley Bird YouTube channel, brought to you by Red Heart Yarns. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to make this lace panel crochet poncho by my good friend, Selena Baca. This pattern uses three to five balls of Red Heart Unforgettable yarn. It all depends on the size you are making. It also uses a size J or six millimeter crochet hook. This pattern is very easy to make. All you really need to know how to do are some basic crochet stitches, and then I will show you the little extra stitches you need to know in order to make that really cool lacy, chevron-y, ripple sort of panel there in the center. Once you have mastered this stitch, you'll be able to complete this really great poncho and you can have something to wear by the end of the weekend. Why don't you go ahead and grab your free pattern. It is available over on redheart.com. I have put a link to the pattern right down there in the video description box below. And while you're down there, please smash that like button, as my kids say, to let me know, one, you enjoyed this video, two, maybe you really like this pattern, and three, maybe you're a big fan of Selena Baca's as well and you just wanna show us some love. Of. Whatever the reason, I will encourage you to please smash that like button. Okay, go ahead, grab the pattern, gather your materials, join me back here, and I'm going to get you started on this really great lace panel crochet poncho. Now that you have your pattern and your materials, let's take a look at the construction of this poncho. This poncho is made up really simply, okay? It's just done in two halves. There's a front panel with the lace bit, and the back panel is just basic crochet stitches. So the poncho itself, if you look up here, is separated from the front, which is right here, and the back right here, by the little center bit <laughs> where you would put your head. What we're gonna learn is how do we start off our panel so that way we can start getting this really cool lacy ripple uh, chevron sort of look here down the center and yet still have basic stitches along the side. Once we learn that and you finish this first panel, you then will move on and pick up stitches along your foundation edge right here and work the back panel pretty even. This is a very simple construction and one that you're gonna find simply flies off your hook, especially once you learn this lace panel. So let's go ahead and get started with our chain stitches in the first couple rows and then jump into the lace panel so that you know how to work the front panel of this poncho. First things first, when you're using Red Heart Unforgettable, it is suggested that you undo the yarn from the outside of the ball. Don't pull from the center. There's a better chance of your yarn breaking if you're pulling from the center, so make sure you pull from the outside. The first part of the instructions tell you to chain a certain number of stitches based on the size you're making. You'll notice in the notes that Selena does suggest in order to make the size that best fits you, you measure around your shoulders along the collarbone area and choose a size that's closest to that circumference. Once you choose that size, you will follow along in the pattern with the instructions that are for that size, with the number that correspond, correspond with the size you're making. For this sample, I will be using 44 stitches, which is not a number that's on the pattern, but it just makes a smaller version of what you're going to be making at home, so that way we can move along in this video. The first thing we want to do is start off with a slip knot. So you put the tail of your yarn in your hand, take your working yarn, wrap it around your forefinger and middle finger. When you come back up, cross over. After you cross over, rotate your hand, go underneath the front loop and grab the back loop and off. When you pull that off, just separate the two ends of the yarn and you have a slip knot directly on your hook. Anytime a loop is on your hook, it does not count as a stitch. It must be worked into a stitch before you can count it. So right now, we have no chains. You would go ahead and chain the number of stitches that you need to chain for the size you are making. Once again, I'll be doing 44. To chain, you hold your hook and your yarn just like so. And you take your hook and you will go around the yarn, grabbing it with this hook portion of the hook, and then pulling that through the loop on your hook. Now we have one chain. We'll do that again. Rotate around the yarn and then pull through the loop on your hook. There's two. Rotate around the yarn and pull the loop through 
the loop on your hook. You want to make sure you do not tighten these stitches as you're working them. You want them to remain that size. So as you're working along, take the pad of your thumb and move it up along those chain stitches as you make them. It'll make it so that they don't twist and turn and it'll also make it so that way you don't accidentally tighten those stitches up unintentionally. I usually will move up about every third chain as I go along. Once again, go ahead and chain the number that you need for your poncho. Once you've completed all the chains that you need to do for your size, you're ready to jump into row one for the front panel. The front panel has you start off by skipping one chain and working a half double crochet in the second chain from hook. So you will yarn over your hook, go into that second chain from hook, yarn over, pull up a loop so you have three loops on your hook, yarn over, draw through all three loops. Please note that that first skip chain does not count as a stitch. Once you've done that first one, you will do half double crochets in every chain down the row. So once you have completed your entire row of half double crochets, you will have one less the number of chains you completed for the number of stitches you have. Meaning, I did 44 chains, so I will have 43 half double crochets at the end of this row. You'll notice I'm just yarning over, going into the next chain, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, draw through three. Once you've completed all your half double crochets down your chain row, you'll go ahead and turn your work and move on to row two. Once you turn your work, go ahead and chain one. Again, this does not count as a stitch, and you will start by doing half double crochets in the top of each half double crochet you just completed. So we will start right here at this very first one, and we will go through both loops. You can see that hole right there. We'll go through both loops yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, draw through all three. And we will work that into each stitch all the way down. And you want to make sure you are keeping your stitches consistent in size. You aren't accidentally pulling them too tight as you work along. Make sure you keep them very consistent. When you get to the end of this row, that's when things change up a little bit and we'll jump in to the lace portion of this panel. Once you learn how to do the two rows of this lace portion, you will be on your way for the front part of this poncho. So let's go ahead, get to the end of this row and jump in to the lace portion. One thing that I would like to point out that might make it a little bit easier for you guys to conceptualize where this lace portion is going to be. It's literally in the center 25 stitches of the front panel of this poncho. So for me, I did 44 um, chains, which left me with 43 stitches, which means if I take the center 25, then I'm only going to have nine stitches on either side of that 25. So I need to work nine stitches in and then I'll work my lace stitches and then I'll have nine stitches to the end. For you, depending on what size you're making, your numbers on the outside of the lace portion will be different, but the numbers for the lace portion itself will still remain 25 stitches. Does that help? Hopefully that doesn't confuse you too much, but I know that for me, knowing where those lace stitches are going to be really helps and knowing that it's in that center 25 stitches really just makes it easier for me. One thing that really does help me with that is being able to mark where my lace stitches begin and where my lace stitches end. So that's where we will use a stitch marker for that point. So let's go ahead and jump into row three. For me, I need to do a double crochet for nine stitches. So I will work a double crochet, which is very similar to the half double, only instead of pulling through all three stitches, I do it in segments. So I yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, draw through two, 
yarn over a draw through two. It makes a taller stitch. Let me get over to where the lace portion is going to be. And once again, I am going through both loops of the stitch. I am not just working into the back loop only or the front loop only. I'm working into both loops. If you ever have to go back and count, the best thing I find is to count the actual post. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then here is eight, and then here's nine. So what I will do is I will take a marker and I'm just gonna mark that stitch that I just finished up with there, okay? So that's going to be my nine stitches and I'm gonna start my lace pit right now. So for the lace portion, we have some new stitches that we haven't used yet, and they might be new stitches to you. So I'll make sure I go slow as we're creating them, but don't worry, they're very simple. Once you've worked a couple of them, you're gonna have no problem. The first part of the instructions, you'll see that there is a bracket, and it has a DC2 tog, and that means double crochet two together over the next two stitches. So we're working a decrease. So you'll yarn over your hook, go into the first stitch, Yarn over your hook, pull up a loop. Yarn over your hook, draw through two and stop. Yarn over your hook, go into the next stitch over. Yarn over your hook, pull up a loop. Yarn over your hook, draw through two and stop. We have two partially completed double crochets now. With this next yarn over and pull through all three stitches, we have taken those two partial stitches and made them into one. That's a double crochet two together. And we need to do that four times. That's why there's the bracket there. So that's once. So we'll yarn over our hook, go into the next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, draw through two. There's one. Yarn over our hook, go into the next stitch, yarn over your hook, pull up a loop, yarn over your hook, draw through two. There's my second partial, so I have two partials. Yarn over my hook and draw through all three loops on my hook, and I've completed my second double crochet two together. Yarn over my hook, go into the next stitch. Yarn over my hook, pull up a loop. Yarn over my hook, draw through two. Yarn over my hook, go into the next stitch. Yarn over my hook, pull up a loop. Yarn over my hook, draw through two. Yarn over my hook, draw through all the loops on there, and I've completed my third double crochet two together. One more to go. Yarn over my hook, go into the stitch, yarn over my hook, pull up a loop. Yarn over, draw through two. Yarn over my hook, go into the next stitch, yarn over my hook, pull up a loop. Yarn over my hook, draw through two. Yarn over my hook, draw through all three loops on my hook. We've just completed four double crochet two together decreases. Now we're gonna do a series of increases to create that ripple look. It's very important in this next section, you do not skip a stitch, because at the very end of this row, we will end up with the same number of stitches as we started. Even though we've done decreases, we will be doing increases, and then we'll do decreases again. You just have to make sure you keep the same stitch count, okay? And you'll do that by working all of the stitches as I'm getting ready to show you. Now this new stitch we're gonna use for the increase is called a cluster. And a cluster is similar to the double crochet two together. However, instead of splitting up those partial double crochets in between two stitches, we are going to do partial double crochets all into the same stitch and then finish all of those stitches off into one stitch. And so it'll create a nice little cluster look. Don't be confused, it'll make sense here in just a second. So the next part of the instructions, it says we will cluster in the next stitch. So this next stitch here, we're going to do a cluster. So to do a cluster, you yarn over your hook, go into the stitch, yarn over your hook, pull up a loop, yarn over your hook and draw through two. So that's the first partial. We want three partials for a cluster. So we will yarn over our hook, go into the same stitch, Yarn over our hook, pull up a loop. Yarn over our hook, draw through two. Yarn over our hook, go into the same stitch. Yarn over our hook, pull up a loop. Yarn over our hook, draw through two. So you have four loops on your hook. You will yarn over, draw through all four loops, and that creates one cluster stitch. Once you've created the cluster, you then need to do a chain one. 
Okay, so that whole section there, we are going to repeat that for a total of eight times. So that's one. So we have to do that seven more times. Here we go. So into the next stitch over, we will yarn over our hook, go into the stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, draw through two, yarn over our hook, go into the stitch, yarn over your hook, pull up a loop, yarn over, draw through two. Yarn over your hook, go into the stitch. Yarn over your hook, pull up a loop. Yarn over your hook, draw through two. You have four loops on your hook. Yarn over, draw through all four, and then chain one. So we have two clusters completed. I have six more to do. This is my last cluster here. And once I finish this, I will chain one. Once I've completed that eight times, the next part of the instructions has me put a cluster in the next stitch over. So after I've done my chain one, I will now just do one cluster without a chain one next to it, okay? So I'm just doing a cluster stitch and no chain one after. So I have a total of nine cluster stitches, okay? Once I've done that, I go back into my double crochet two togethers, and we know how to do that. We yarn over our hook, go into the next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, draw through two. Yarn over our hook, go into the next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, draw through two. Yarn over, draw through all three loops on your hook. And we will do this a total of four times. So we will have four decreases made. Once I have finished my last decrease, I know that I am ready to just work the next series of instructions, which is double crochet in each stitch to the end. And if my math is correct with my 44 original chains, I will have nine more stitches to double crochet into the end. But before I do that, I will go ahead and take my marker and I'm just gonna place it into the stitch I just finished just to let myself know that those are my center 25 stitches for my lace section and it will help me later on keeping track of where I am. It just helps me out. So now I will go ahead and just do plain old double crochets all the way to the end. Once you have finished row three, your work looks a little bit like this. You can see where it's already starting to take shape of that nice little lace panel front. And all of your clusters are right here and your double crochet two togethers are out here. So you have decreases, increases, decreases. Because you worked those chain ones between your clusters, your actual stitch count has not changed if you count those chain ones as a stitch. That's right, even though you've done decreases, by doing those chain ones between the clusters, you've also worked increases. So when we go into row four and we work half double crochets into all of the stitches across the row, including those chain ones, you will still have the same number of stitches as you had before you started row three. That's very important. You wanna make sure throughout the body of this poncho, you maintain that same stitch count. So if you find that one row is uh, one short or one too many, you wanna make sure you rip back and find where that mistake is because you wanna maintain that stitch count. If you don't, your lace panel will not be straight down the entire front. So this is very important, okay? Let's go ahead and jump into row four. I'm gonna show you how to work into those lace stitches and then we will uh, move on to the next step. So we begin with a chain one and that does not count as a stitch and then we jump into half doubles. So you yarn over your hook, go into this first stitch here, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, draw through all three. You will do that all the way across. So I'm gonna just work across here until I get to my stitch marker that I put there because I know that that indicates when my stitches changed from just being plain old double crochets into the lace portion of this panel poncho. So I am just working right across here, all of these stitches, 
and here I am. I'm to my first marker, and this is where I am gonna see stitches that look a little bit different in that the, 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 let me see, the loops here, they look a little bit elongated because I didn't over tighten them. I wanted them nice and loose. But this stitch right there, that space, that's the one I wanna go into with my half double. And it is the double crochet two together space, okay? So I wanna make sure I'm working into each one of those double crochet two togethers. And then once I get past those, I will be working into my cluster stitches. So here I am, I'm to my cluster stitch right here. So I will work my half double crochet into the top of that cluster. And remember, right next to that cluster, I have this chain. Now I have a choice. I can work into the actual chain or I can work into the chain space. The choice is really up to you. The difference really isn't that big of a deal. Just choose which one you wanna do and be consistent with it. For me, I prefer to work into the space. I think it makes it a little bit more open and lacy, so I would just work around the actual chain itself and create my half double. Then I go into the next cluster stitch and then go into the next chain space. Go into the next cluster stitch and the next chain space, so on and so forth. Again, I'm choosing to work into the space. You could choose to work into the actual chain. It's completely up to you. What we need to make sure of is at the end of this row, we still have the same number of stitches as we had before we started row three with those lace stitches. We should have the same number. Nothing has changed. And that's because we have decreased with our double crochet two together, the same number of stitches as we increased with our chain ones. I am to the edge here where I'm back to my just my double crochet two together so I don't have any chain stitches to work into there. So I'm just working plain into my double crochet two togethers. I'm back to my other marker so I could remove it and carry on just working to the end of my row. Now, some of you might be saying, Marley, why are you using markers? You absolutely don't have to use markers. They're more there for your for your understanding of where the lace panels is. They are there for a, uh, like a symbol for you to say, hey, something's changing when you get to this point. It's whatever you want those markers to represent for you. You absolutely do not have to use a marker, but if you want to, they are available as a tool for you to use. Once you get to the end of row four, if I put down my work, it really starts to take shape and you begin to see that nice subtle shaping of the lace panel. Now for the pattern, you carry on repeating rows three and four for the number of times as written in the pattern. It's all different for each size. That's why I'm not giving you a specific number. Just take a look at the pattern and find the number that corresponds with the size you are making. You will end with a row four though. Once you end with that row four, you'll finish off your work and then it's time to start the back panel. Okay, for the back panel, we will begin working directly onto the panel you just finished. So there's no extra seaming going on, okay? So to jump in with this, I'm not gonna continue on with what I have here, there's no point. It's just repeating rows three and four. By now, you know how to do that, and if you don't, hit rewind and just rewatch everything I just taught you. Let's go ahead and learn how to do the back panel. Your front panel is complete. Let's learn how to make the back panel of this poncho. The first thing you wanna do is you want to turn your work with the right side facing you, okay? So if you are right-handed, your tail is going to be over here on the right-hand side for your foundation chain. If you're left-handed, it's on the opposite side. And what we will do is we are going to join our yarn into the open loops of the foundation chain right here. And we will work over the number of stitches as indicated in the pattern. We will chain 35 stitches, skipping 35 open loops, and then finish up to the end. 
Now remember, I'm working with fewer stitches than you are. I only have 43 stitches total. And so in order to skip 35 stitches, that leaves eight stitches for me or four on either side. So to start off with, I'm only gonna work four stitches and then I will chain 35 and then work four stitches at the other end you will be using the number of stitches as indicated in the pattern. So make sure you've downloaded that pattern, okay? All we will do here is take your yarn, same yarn you've been working with all along, and you will right here join yarn with a slip stitch into this first unused loop of the foundation chain. So I will go into that loop, yarn over, pull up a loop, and then yarn over and draw through give that a nice pull and that's a slip stitch okay so i've joined my yarn to that open loop of my foundation chain now i can jump into row one of my neck opening okay so we're going to create this neck opening we start off with a chain one and that does not count as a stitch so we will work a half double crochet into that same open chain there and complete that and you will do a half double crochet in the next one and so on and so forth for the number of stitches as you need to do for your size, okay? For me, and this little tiny swatch, I only have to do four. Once I've done the number of stitches I need to do, I then need to chain 35. And this is the back neck opening, okay? Once I chain those 35, I also will skip 35 stitches along my lace panel front. So now I will go ahead and chain 35. Just like we did the foundation chain, I'm working the stitches the same way. I will still move up the pad of my thumb, working along. Now that I've chained 35, I will skip 35 stitches from here all the way to over here. And I know that that leaves me with four stitches. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna count back four stitches here. And in this fourth stitch, I will go ahead and work a half double crochet into that open loop there. And in the following stitches as well until I get to the end. And what this has done is it has created a neck opening for the poncho. Okay, here we go. So right now, if I were to set this down, this would be the front portion of my lace poncho and this is where the back would start. Now what we'll do is turn our work, chain one and work half double crochets all the way back. And this time I do want you to work those half double crochets into the actual chain. We're not gonna work into the big space like we did the chain ones. We're gonna work into the actual chains. When we get to the end, we'll end up with the same number of stitches as you ended up with the first panel as well. So let's go ahead, turn our work. Then we will do a chain one and we jump right into our half double crochets, which we've been doing all along. So you should know how to do them by this point. What's gonna be a little bit different here is that you're working to actual stitches here, right? So we've just worked into actual stitches and now we need to jump in and work into actual chains. So when you do that, it'll be just like working into your foundation chain, except these chains are just mid row, okay? This is really a common thing, but you're still working into your chains here as if they're foundation chains, okay? And we'll do this all the way to the end and your remaining number of stitches will be the same stitch count as what you had for the front panel of this poncho. After you've completed this row, the following row is just working the chain one half double crochet all the way down the row continuously for the same number of rows as you did for the front panel. That number is written in the pattern, so make sure if you've gone along and highlighted all of the numbers that pertain to your size, you'll have no problem knowing exactly how many rows that is. Once you've done that, all you would do is fasten off your work and your entire poncho is complete. That's one of the great things about working with Selena Baca patterns is she makes it really um, user-friendly. There's not a whole lot of extra 
finishing work that goes into it. Once you're done crocheting, your work is complete. So uh, you'll get to the end of the second panel and you'll weave in your ends and you'll have a really great poncho. I don't know why I'm still crocheting this. You don't need to see this anymore. Um, and you'll just keep going until the end and you'll have half double crochets all the way across. Maybe it'll help to take a look at the sample once again. So I'll move this aside. And when I pull this up, let's see, let's take a look at the join. Right here, this is the neck opening, and you can see in this, this is where she worked over the number of stitches she needed to for her particular pattern. This is the actual join. This is where her work went this way for the front panel. Her work went this way for the back panel. This is her 35 stitches for the neck opening. And then this is her opposite side of the poncho. So as she works back and forth here, these are just all of her half double crochets down the length of the lacy poncho. And when I look at the lacy poncho here, you can see how simply beautiful this lace bit is here. And it's such a subtle lace portion and a nice little chevron ripple look. It's just absolutely gorgeous. Couple that with the beautiful Red Heart Unforgettable yarn and you have something that really is gonna pack a punch and be simply stunning. I know you could absolutely finish this poncho in a weekend, so go ahead, grab yourself some yarn a nice J hook, which is a six millimeter hook. Get the free pattern, use this video and make yourself a poncho. I know you'll love it. Hopefully you have enjoyed this video and you'll run out and make your very own lace panel crochet poncho. Once again, this is a pattern by Selena Baca. Absolutely love her, love her. Uh, if you make this poncho, go ahead and tag her. It's hashtag Selena Baca crochet and tag me as well, hashtag Marley Bird. Okay guys, thank you so much for joining me for this my first with marley bird i hope you enjoy this poncho and i can't wait to see you guys making all of yours and wearing them i'm marley bird proud spokesperson for red heart yarns thank you everything you need to know about knitting or crochet can be found right here on the marley bird youtube channel learn with marley bird visit youtube.com forward slash marley bird